Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports Podcast. This show is brought to you by Flatirons Tuning, your source for any aftermarket or OEM Subaru parts. Be sure to check out our store at flatironstuning.com, and stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is episode number 75 of the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports Podcast. And today we've got another special guest with us. Joining us is Jamie Moreno. Uh, you might recognize her from her Instagram, uh, which is the Racing Chica. And Jamie, we had to bring you on because through, through a set of fortunate circumstances, we, V and I both got to go out to Utah to the Subaru Ride and Drive to drive the new WRX and the new BRZ. And I was out taking pictures of the, of the new WRX, as I think it was. And I, I <laughs> came back into the, into the tent and I heard, John, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, they yeah. found me. I realized <laughs> that I snuck in. Oh, no. But it was, it was you. <laughs> yeah, it was your logo, the logo on your yep. jacket. That's. Uh, I was like, wait, he looks familiar. <laughs> and then I saw yeah. flat irons. I was like, oh my god, it's John. <laughs> and and it was yeah. it was funny because Subaru let us out there, and we weren't the typical like the normal people that were mm-hmm. participating in the Ryan drive. But we were really eager to to get out there and see those cars. And when I found out that you were one of the instructors, <laughs> that was awesome. And so I got to ride around the, the track with you. Right, I drove and you rode with me, mm-hmm. uh, bravely, uh, <laughs> which went awesome. So I want to talk about that, but before we dive into all that, I want to kind of, anybody that's not familiar with you and what you've been up to, I kind of want to talk about, you know, how you got into cars and maybe some of your background that sure. led to the point where now you're basically showing all these people from all the super dealerships all over the country, what the new WRX is all about. Sure, so how sure. did how did you get started <laughs> in, in driving and stuff? Um, I'd have to say my dad, uh, my dad and I would always work on his cars and I've always been fascinated on uh, fixing cars and just love the speed and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, my dad had a, a 93 red eclipse, which I loved. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. and you got to show me how you shift the gears and stuff. When I was little and kind of got it, I was like, Oh, this is awesome. And you know, when you're little, you're like, yeah, this is fast. <laughs> and, um, and then after I graduated college, I wanted to find, you know, like a fast car. Like it's always been my dream mm. to get something a little bit faster. Yeah. And um, I traded my little Chevy Aveo, which was great on fuel for college. Like, don't get me wrong, right. it was good. Very practical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very practical car. <laughs> traded it in. Um, and I was living at Virginia at the time. I was working for Freddie Mac. And I literally had an Excel spreadsheet with the VIN number of all the cars I wanted to try. And like I went to all the dealerships. None of them had the cars. And then ended up at the Subaru dealership. And there was a black um, Subaru WRX for sale. They had mm-hmm. it discounted. And a Jeep guy, he was like, oh, I don't know much about this car. But sure, we can go give it a chance and give it a try and my husband was the first one to drive and man when that turbo kicked in I was like yes (laughs) this is my car (laughs) and also when they turned it over that that suey rumble and I was like sure sounds nice yeah (laughs) so yeah you know instead of love at first sight I guess it was love at first sound (laughs) yeah (laughs) well a lot of similarities with the with the older eclipses Mm -hmm. I mean there's there's a lot of people that went back and forth you know from eclipse to Subaru then to to the Evo and then back again you know who knows so crazy (laughs) yeah that's a common tale how did you like what what kind of prompted you to I mean it was a fun car certainly Mm -hmm. but to kind of explore what you could do with the car explore driving the car well, you know how WRX is, they're always known for rally racing and all mm-hmm. that. And I had a friend um, in Virginia at the time who we talked about it and he's like, no, you don't want to take your brand new car. He's like, I just messed up both my bumper covers. They fell off. Oh no! And like he, he, he was rallying uh-huh. and, and he's like, why don't you try autocross first? Because <laughs> he knew like I'm pretty anal about car paint. So. Sure. <laughs> Not anymore. The car is already trashed, but right, <laughs> you know, right. brand new. Um, and yeah, I went to autocross. I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, it took me a minute to like figure out what I was doing. Like I noticed I had a hard time focusing and mm. just, yeah, things weren't like quite right. I felt like in my brain for a second. <laughs> and then, um, and then that kind of led me on a personal journey of like, bettering my health and all this Mm. other stuff and then I decided I want to go faster and I did what they call over at uh, UMC they call it wow it was Mm. uh, wide open Wednesday now they call it amateur track day and I went with an instructor and oh my god I just had a blast I literally I was like this is for me I'm like this is way more fun than autocross (laughs) to me because I got to go fast because I got to go faster like I wanted speed and and that kind of prompted and then I noticed like the more I did that the better my mental health got um I just noticed that with racing it really 
took away like all that negative toxic energy and just like all yeah. the worries like you, like when you're on the track you don't think about anything like you're just right. I, I call it an open eye meditation because you're just like in the zone you feel great it's almost euphoric out there mm -hmm. and I just yeah that that's what made me <laughs> really fall in love with sure. racing and, Very and cool. that yeah, and that made me, you know, want to get better and get my focus in with different dietary things, supplements and therapy and all this other stuff. Because mm -hmm. I want to be the best driver I can be because you have to be mentally resilient for racing. You can't, you know, I, I mean, it, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say, did it, did it kind of surprise you maybe at the beginning how mentally focused you have to be, how mentally challenging it is to drive a car at speed? It is. Yeah, it really shocked me. Like I said, with autocross, I, I knew something was a little off when I was like, wait, I can't focus the way I really want to focus to put mm -hmm. the car where I need it to go. Mm -hmm. So that really was, yeah, that was my epiphany moment for sure. It's, it is, it's one of those things where I think it catches some people out. You know, we, we all, we drive cars all the time. You know, mo most, I mean, cars are just kind of part of life here in, in the U.S. And we, we drive all, all over the place. And, and I think there's, there's a lot of people that think that driving on a track, I mean, autocross is like everything is sped up, but on a track, mm -hmm. a lot of people figure, well, I'm just going to do what I always do. I'm just going to go faster and it's going to be the same, the same skill set, the same kind of experience, the same kind of mental focus. And then they get out there the first time sometimes, and it's just, it can be overwhelming. It is, um, yeah. I remember, I think the first time I was on track, I think I did like two laps and I came back off. It was just an open track day and it came off because it was like, what, like co felt completely <laughs> overwhelmed. Like, what is like, what is wrong? Right. Like, why isn't this as easy as it was right. to like drive here and, and, and all that? Like, what is, what is so different about this? So it's interesting that that kind of prompted you to explore that, like just mm -hmm. the mental aspect of it even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people, you know, sometimes don't think about the physical aspect too. Like it is tiring on the body, the G's, your neck, your shoulders, yep. like it all gets stressed. Like even though you're having a great time, it's still physical stress on the body yeah. that people don't realize too. Once you, I mean, it, it sounds like in part, it, would it be fair to say that like driving and actually getting out to the track was a little bit kind of like a, a fun release for you. It was just, it was a fun way to just kind of let everything else <laughs> fall, fall to, uh, you know, to yeah. to the back and, and just like focus on driving yeah call it you expensive, that, it's expensive therapy is what it's, I call it, it. You, know, you know most good therapy is though right yeah yeah, yeah. but once once you kind of started doing that and, and working through that did you find that some of the techniques that you used for driving were also applicable to to like other other parts of your day-to-day -day life you know, I'm still kind of struggling with that aspect because it's it's like I have a little alter ego that's like super confident on the track. And then when I come to real life, I, I don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. I'm very, sure. um, how do you call it, more shy, I guess. And so, it yeah, I'm still struggling trying to take parts of that in into my day to day. And sometimes sure. I can. Sometimes I, I can do that. And other times it's like, nope, this thing happening. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, we're always in life. We're always presented with with. I mean, a million different challenges. And, yes. and if you, if you get your handle on, on a couple of them, that's, that's great. And like a lot of times when you get your footing and you can overcome like one challenge and you, and you feel like, like driving, like, okay, I can, mm -hmm. I, I have this now. This yes. is something that I can say is in my wheelhouse can give you the confidence to like start addressing other challenges, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be exactly the same, but a lot of, I, I was just wondering if like some of the techniques or like the, the process of the approach was applicable do you think yeah yeah like i'm i'm terrified of heights and uh -huh. we we when we had our house we did replace the roof on our own and i kind of oh, wow. took the same same i guess thinking like i can do this i can get through this just like when i attack certain corners that i'm not confident in mm. you just freaking do it <laughs> you just yeah. like i i don't you just like empower yourself to just freaking do it and Break, break through yep. those boundaries. Yep, yep. That's interesting. Well, and, and you know, yeah, that's actually really interesting with driving because that's, that's a lot of what, what the process is to go faster is to kind of almost like reprogram your brain, reprogram what you think is possible yep. because like – I push I've, yourself. Definitely and, and push yourself. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Like be, be willing to like say, mm -hmm. well, I think the car can only go through this corner at 40, but mm -hmm. 
But I see all these people doing it like 65, 70. So maybe, maybe there is something to it. But then like, how do you, how do you kind of muster up the, the gumption to give it a shot? But it, you know, for some of us, yeah. it's baby steps. For some of us, it's like, well, if I see people doing it at 70, I'm going to try 90 and then we'll just back it off and we'll just see what happens. Right. I am not right. one of those people either, but uh, <laughs> I, they're out there. Yeah, yeah, kind of like uh, the last turn in Road Atlanta, like when people were telling me, oh, yeah, we just go flat out. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> flat yeah. out, like, and I was like, okay, like, yeah. I did it. I was like, okay, I just got to trust the car is going to stick. I got to trust in myself and just go for it. And yeah, yeah, like I came out, I've never come out of the car shaking in so much like adrenaline <laughs> from yeah. doing that. And that, yeah, so that kind of, that, that moment kind of I guess inspires me in other moments they'll be like okay I did that turn that was really scary I can do this one <laughs> you and, know? Then, and then you do it a few more times and you realize that it's not as scary and then yeah. all of a sudden then that's now you've now you've you've you've, you've pushed through that boundary you, you've raised the speed in that corner and now you can apply it to other things exactly exactly yeah. you can't expect growth without getting out of your comfort zone for right sure. did you did you, as you're kind of progressing and trying to find ways to go faster, did you just spend a lot of time at the track and drive a bunch? Or did you actually have people that also drove that sat in with you that kind of like, kind of coached you and, and helped you through it? Or did you, did you like do any kind of like professional instruction? Uh, a little bit of everything. So yeah, uh, definitely seat time by myself. Uh, we have great instructors in NASA. Um, I also hired uh, Cole Pallison to come with me one day. Oh, yeah. Um, and he, like, I don't let many people drive my car. He actually drove my car because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I trusted him. And, and that's when the moment clicked. Cause he, then I felt exactly what it's supposed to feel like. And okay. that, that was the hugest moment ever. And then I did go to Bondurant a few years ago and went through their Grand Prix class and drove their, um, Dodge Challenger and their little formula car as well. So Very I did cool. a little bit of everything. Yeah. That's a lot. And, and I bet, you, I bet that like the writing writing with somebody like cole that can like actually like for him it's maybe eight tenths for you it's like 14 tenths but to realize <laughs> that like okay this is actually what the car could do this is actually what's possible and then just yes. try and find ways to like get back up to the level that's a huge layout opening experience it is, I, I had it something is. like that with the guy right here named mike pettiford where i i rode around at the track with him thought i was doing okay and realized no i'm really slow but but it was just like, wow, there's so much more possible with this car. And that's, I think for, for a lot of people to get hooked, that's, that's the, that's, that's the hook. It's like you, yeah. you drive and you think you're going fast and then you realize, man, there is so much, there's so much more that, that's possible mm -hmm. with, with cornering and braking and like, it's, exactly. it's like, it keeps yes. you motivated to keep going. <laughs> that's what For like sure. For right. sure. Well, and so it actually, it makes sense to me that you had that much instruction because, so I'm, when we, when we met up at mm -hmm. UMC, you're in the passenger seat, you're guiding me around and you were awesome. Thank so you. like you. awesome hand signals, like communication, like telling me what's going up when I made mistakes. Um, you didn't, there was no, no panic in your voice whatsoever. I don't know if it was inside, but. No, no, no. <laughs> I've, I've instructed so many times out there. And like I said, it's my home track. So I could. That's I could, awesome. Man. I could do it in my sleep. <laughs> well, and that was, that was a lot of fun. And was, I mean, yeah. how did you, like, how did it come to be? Like, have you, have you, it sounds like you've done a fair amount of instruction. Is that what led you to get kind of connected with Subaru for this event or? Yeah. Oh, oh funny enough. Um, so my friend, Jen, that works over at UMC, she texted me and she asked me, Hey, um, are you interested in a job? There's um, this group that's hosting an event and they would like to shoot a commercial uh, with Subarus. And I was like, oh yeah, it's Subarus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would I not say no? And then, so um, that video that you guys watched, um, how to drive the track, that was me on the BRZ and the WRX. So they had Very me cool. go. So it wasn't a commercial. It was an instructional video that right. come to find out later. Um, and I had to drive that at like 20 miles an hour around the track, trying to like, okay, how do I take this at the slowest speed, but still keep the line going? Mm -hmm. So I'm not like, hey, this is so easy and just kind of go be everywhere. Yeah. But, and then, um, so yeah, it was done. That was Sunday. And so I did that. And then um, the owner of that's hosting the event for Subaru, I gave him my card. I was like, hey, you know, I do instructionals, like, 
uh, I could do any more of these videos if you'd like. And then he called me up, was it Tuesday night, <laughs> saying, we need another driver. Our other driver dropped out. Would you mind instructing over 100 people over the course of like three days? And I was like, uh, yeah, I am totally down for Very that. Very cool. So yeah, it was, oh my God, it was so awesome. <laughs> well, and so, I mean, you basically were hired by Subaru to instruct people about their new car. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, it, it's just as so a amazing. Super, as a super enthusiast, I mean, that's got to be like, that's got to be the best day ever. Oh, it was the best three days ever. I was so tired every at the end of every day. But like, I woke up every day like, yeah, I'm going to go instruct again. And like, it, it's, uh, it's, how do I say it? Like, I love sharing the magic I feel on the track with other people by doing the ride alongs or even mm -hmm. instructing. And so I love that everybody like came out of the car and was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. Like they, I love when people, you know, improve so quickly on the track and they're so proud of themselves that they were able to do it. And like things clicked for them. Like mm -hmm. to me, that is the best feeling ever. So it's for sure. just, yeah, <laughs> it's just well, amazing. And I'd wager that because the majority of the people that were going through this were people that had not driven on the track before. And so you're, you're kind of, you're, you're first guiding them through their first track experience. And then you're hopping in the driver's seat. You're giving that experience that you had with like, you know, say Cole Powelson, like, Hey, here's, let me give you a glimpse about what this car can do. Mm -hmm. Did you like, uh, did you have some people that were just kind of blown away by like, wow, look at, look at what this car is doing. And you're, you're the one that's now giving that experience. to them. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect people to react so like positively. Like I'm like, this is like just normal speed to me. And to them, it, you know, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> of course to them, it's like yeah. so cool. Like I think the best compliment I got from somebody was like, wow, this is the most authentic Subaru experience I've had all day. Like Very that, cool. that I will never forget. Like he was just so impressed of like everything <laughs> yeah like what That's i awesome. could do what the car could do and yeah 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 it was it was very fun the only my only complaint was that we didn't get to spend all day there it was everything was very quick it was you know come in get in the car drive the car get out of the car get on the bus go to the next place do the same thing over again it was very it was very quick very rushed yeah was, yeah each each <laughs> thing was very fun and i was i was very glad to be able to be there and and participate with it um but yeah just like man if i could just start this over again like now we've been through the first four if i could just do this again for the latter half of the day that would be perfect but it wasn't in the cards this time around i know i know i wish i had more time with certain people because there's certain people that naturally are really gifted and could mm -hmm. feel when to apply the throttle when to break when to yeah. turn it i was like oh man i could really turn this person yeah. into, you know <laughs> <laughs> really well, <good> racer. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, is I think they're trying to, I mean, they're, they're Subaru is trying to let people know what these cars are about, what they can do, like that they are actually capable and just, just give a, give us like these people that are going to be talking about them to, to most mm -hmm. of people that are interested in them, like a glimpse of that and, and be able to speak from experience about that. But I hope that there's some of those people, I talked to a couple of them, they're like, that was the, that was the most fun thing I've ever done. I like, you know, there's one guy in particular, and I can't remember his name, but he was from California and he had never driven to the track, never driven at speed. We were talking on the bus going out there. Then I was talking to him on the bus going back and he's like, that was the best. And I was like, you know, if you get one of these cars, you can actually do all this, but yeah. a lot more of it. He's like, oh, he, the wheels were turning. I think for a number of people, the wheels were yeah. turning that they wanted to yeah. explore that more. Yeah, yeah, there's, very cool. yeah, there was a few people that told me they're like, man, I need to get out and do this. And I was like, yeah, join SCCA, join NASA, like, just get out there. You don't yeah. need 700 horsepower <laughs> to go have yeah. fun. Like, it's, yeah. Well, so, so let's, let's talk about the WRX. Now, it sounds like you drove the BRZ and the WRX. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you get to drive the BRZ on track as well? Did you get to kind of explore both of those or was it mainly just the WRX? <sighs> Uh, the BRZ, it was a little bit on the track. I didn't get to go full, full speed on yeah. that one. So I didn't really get to feel it. But the times when I got to go a little bit faster, um, I could definitely feel how it rotated so much mm -hmm. easier than the WRX, but yeah. it's rear wheel drive. So and it's lighter. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot lighter on the steering. Like it just turns in where you need it to. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. But mainly I was on the WRX side. Yeah. So the, the thing that I was so impressed by with that car, I, I, I walked in not expecting a lot. Like 
when we when we found out what we were doing and hey all right you're driving the new wrx and you're driving the new brz and there's a lot of a lot of information that come out about the new brz and how good it was how with the extra extra power and extra torque from the engine it's a lot more responsive but there's just there were just wasn't a lot of discussion about the new wrx so like all, my expectation be its expectation was like the new brz that's going to be a heck of a lot of fun and the wrx like i don't know i'm not so sure i don't know what what to expect and especially with super having announced that they had killed off the sti like that kind of dropped my expectations mm -hmm. because it's like well if you're taking away the flagship performance car and, right. there, and there's this new wrx and, and the, the looks were let's say polarizing yeah it's like yeah <laughs> like what's what what kind of effort has gone into the development of this car but then we got there and we started driving everything and and the brz is it is so much fun it's it's a mm -hmm. light nimble rear wheel drive sports car it is it is truly a sports car it's a lot of fun what i didn't expect is for the wrx to be so much fun and right. and especially like stock like just a stock stock right. wrx like nothing yeah. done to it at all like 100 percent stock and here we are driving it at the track we're driving at that little like mock rally stage you know at speed going through really tight corners and the car was so responsive and the turn in was so really good was. yeah and and it just it was there and i don't know if I don't know. Just the setup was so good. Like it did not punish mistakes at all. And, right. and that's what was the most surprising. Like it was, it was a very neutral car. Like understeer was not an issue. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And, and I got out of that car just thinking, well, if I could spend about another two hours doing this in this car, like that would be a good day. I just wanted to get back in there and drive it more. It was just so much fun. Right. Right. Like I was shocked when I first got to go full bore. It reminded me of my WRX and its stage in life when I when I had teens on teen coilovers on it and yeah. did a little bit more work to kind of remove that understeer issue that mine oh mine was yeah. bad my 09 was bad and like yeah. the suspension was horrible it was super soft and so it reminded me of my WX at that stage and mm -hmm. so I was able to like just drive through as if I went back in time in my car yeah. and it was I was just like oh my god it actually sticks on the high speed turns there's no understeer it doesn't really fight me either when they're on those tight turns like it almost like you almost point it and click go <laughs> you know yeah it is just amazing. My only complaint, well, okay, I got two complaints though okay. <laughs> about okay. this car. First of all, I don't like the gear ratios. I feel like first and second gear are way too freaking short. Like they come mm -hmm. up so fast. And then like in turn five and what was the other turn? I think it's mostly, it's mostly turn five where mm -hmm. it's in be like you're in between, in between. the gears. So you yeah. have to shift gears as you're turning, have one hand on the steering wheel and shift. And that was, and yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what happened. My WRX, even though mine was a five speed and this one's a mm -hmm. six speed, they still, the gear ratios are like fairly similar. And then the, my biggest, biggest complaint I've always had about WRXs mm -hmm. is their brakes. They suck yeah. so yeah. bad. Like, oh yeah. my God, I was smoking a few <laughs> of them as I got out and I was like, please do not melt the piston boots. Cause that's what I did with mine. <laughs> right. Well, and, and it's yeah. worth mentioning, like, because the impression that I got is like, they didn't, like these cars were literally like off the off the production line mm -hmm. and onto the track like because stock brake pads i'm guessing stock fluid because it, it did get yeah it did get a little bit spongy mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and stock tires the, these are not fancy tires these are the same tires that the that they're delivering them to everybody that's bought them with exactly. but yeah like the the capability of this car i mean i walked away from it thinking this is the best stock wrx i've ever driven like for I, real for because real. it's like it's like you were saying, you'd have to do some modifications, some decent modifications to any of the previous gen suspensions mm -hmm. to get it just to this, just to this starting point. And exactly. we actually earlier in the week talked to the guys from Race Comp Engineering who are kind of doing a deep dive into the suspension. Like they, they've actually got some of the, the struts off the cars and they're putting them on shock dynos and figuring mm -hmm. out all the setup that Subaru has done. And it's, it's really impressive. It, it, this, the, the new WX, it's basically a completely reworked car. It's on a brand new chassis, but they they really went in and they looked at the geometry, the suspension, wow. everything. Wow. Except for the brakes. I agree with you on that. Like that's like that's the first thing that would need attention. And I would I hope know. that uh, 
soon Subaru will make those Brembo's an option again because they have right. that on the on the last the generation STI. WRX. Yeah. And they and they have them on the STI too. And I'm like, can you just take those, put them on these, and you have like a complete out of the box car, <laughs> you know? It really would be. It really would be. Mm-hmm. You know, the other thing that was really surprising was I want to ask you, because you spent a lot of time on track, mm-hmm. the power band. Like it did not feel like a Subaru, like a turbocharged Subaru to me. And then you you go through and you see the torque curve and what they've done with it and how mm-hmm. it, like it's a turbo turbocharged four cylinder engine, but it's designed basically to mimic, mimic is maybe the wrong term, but it, like the dyno plot looks like a naturally aspirated car. Like the, yeah, the peak yeah. torque is at 2000 RPMs. It goes all the way to like 6,500 RPMs dead flat. So the horsepower is just this, this straight up incline. It's your- yeah, I, I thought it was fantastic. Like I, I didn't get that turbo lag. Like I would get on my 09 before it was tuned, like just stock out of the box. Like, man, yeah. that turbo lag would kill me. <laughs> and, yeah. and on this one, I didn't feel any need to like mess with it really. Yeah. Like it's just did its thing. Well, and, and the biggest thing, like you're talking about the gear ratios with the older cars, if you missed, if you're in the wrong ratio coming out of a corner, you were either bogging the engine, so you'd mat, mat the gas and nothing would happen, or you, you had to shift down a gear so that your RPMs are pegged, so you're coming out of the corner. You, you have a little bit of acceleration out of the corner, but now you got to shift. Mm-hmm. So like just mm-hmm. as you're coming out, now, yep. now it's time to shift. You lose some of that momentum. But with this engine, like as long as you had RPM range, like and you were coming out of a corner, you were just, I mean, you're just on, on the throttle yeah. and it had pulled like just about everywhere, which was wild. Really, it really did, which I, I was shocked. <laughs> That's why I said it. it takes me back to another time of my car. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> really did. Yeah. I was like, gee, I, I wish my Rex came out of the box like this. It would have been right. nice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, did you, did you get any sense of lap times or, or was it, was it something where you just kind of out there getting familiar with the car so you weren't able to kind of get a sense of like, like it, it felt fast, but like, was it really your no i i wish i should have had harry's lap timer like going on <laughs> in yeah. the car should have i have no idea what okay. the lap times are mm-hmm. yeah well regardless it was impressive and and it's it was just it was just such a fun car and the brz too i mean the the brz was fun and we expected it to be fun but we find ourselves like just as we we're coming back just talking about the wrx because it was so much fun unexpectedly so Right, right. So now, now Subaru's got two different platforms. Whichever one you want to go into, you know, you, you. I don't think you could really go wrong with either one of them. No, no. I just say it depends if you live in a really snowy area and you want the all-wheel drive, or if you don't. If you want to chance it with rear-wheel drive in the snow, hey, that's up to right. you. You know, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But what was interesting though. Two of the tires did delaminate on two of the instructors. So okay. So we that was kind of that was on the first day and we don't know if maybe it's because that track i know like the cars aren't cambered out properly so they yeah. do eat the in you know the outside oh, yeah. pretty bad yeah and and there's this off camber turn you know it's called a triple d's like that mm-hmm. will eat up tires so i don't know if maybe that was it so the next two days what they did is bump up the rear um tire pressures on it okay. to make it rotate actually a little bit better so yeah that's- and and just hold the hold the shape of the tire a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it really it really took the stress off those front tires yeah. for sure. Well, and like I mean, not it it it, it was a stock car. It was yeah. this is not a setup race car. This is this is a completely stock car that we've got like people like you and, and all these other instructors that are driving at speed. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't say like ten tenths, but like you you guys were going pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, those those tires in that car. They were probably just a little bit overtaxed, but, yeah. but just, just, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Well, very cool. But yeah. Yeah. They, what's cool is they never had the same, like, uh, how do you call it? Eight cars, eight mm-hmm. WRXs. They would rotate through them every day. Okay. So every day was a new fresh car, which I was glad. Oh, really? I was worried. Yeah. I was glad because uh, I was worried about them brakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. No, they had about 50 cars between. So I think split in half between the BRZ and the WRX-ish. Okay. So. Yeah, they had a wow. lot. They had a yeah. lot out there. And I was wondering, like, what, what else people did? Because I know they had, like, a little rally section. It looked like they had, mm-hmm. like, a little autocross and a little bit of, like, just doing donuts in the West Paddock area. So They ended up, they took the donuts away because they realized it was eating tires too quickly. They, they mentioned that. 
So uh, yeah. yeah, I think they just the, the autocross was really short. Like it was probably thirty seconds out and back. Like oh, wow. Wow. it was very fast. But the the rally the rally stage was interesting. It was just like at the at the entrance of the track roads that, that were already there, but they just kind of use cones to kind of link them together and kind of make it into a mock rally stage and put some chicanes and stuff in there. But that's cool. Yeah, it really kind of showcased just how how nimble the car was, how how readily it was able to go through those chicanes and, and really tight corners with with speed. I'm jealous so. you got to try that. I want to try that. <laughs> well tw- twist some arms. You're you're are, you're still out there. So I, you never know. Yeah, that's Might true. still be able to happen. <laughs> right. Well so let's I'm, can we talk about some racing? Sure. Because because you've actually like you 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 you've done a lot of driving, but you actually got to the point where you started to compete. Yes. So so how did you get to the point where you were, were wanting to compete? And then what's like, what kind of series did you decide to, to participate in? Um, so, so after I got my TT license, uh, I talked to Cole about this. I was like, well, I don't know where to go now, <laughs> you know, mm. kind of getting bored of doing the same track over and over again. And he's like, well, why don't you join global time attack? He's like, you get to go across the nation. You try different tracks you've never been at. It's a good challenge. And I was like, sure why not let's let's do that and um at that point you know i had a good job that paid pretty well so i was able to like fund all this Mm -hmm. um and yeah just like i don't know just going to new tracks i i kind of approach it like autocross where you don't know what the setup really is you know in autocross and you just have to learn as you go and so on these new tracks it's kind of the same attitude i took i was like okay i'm gonna watch videos i'm gonna ask people or sometimes people just come up and give me pointers Mm -hmm. and just learn new track and yeah i it was awesome it was an awesome challenge i love challenging myself and how how long did it take so from 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 starting to drive at the track starting to kind of like try to learn to drive at speed how long did it take you to decide like to get your to get into tt and then maybe even start to go and across the country and race uh let's see so i got my tt license i think it was 2017 and then i went 2018 so the next year Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. one one year. Okay. Yeah, one year. I was like, yeah, let's go do this. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, and and so you went and and competed in Global Time Attack. Yep. So like, and how many how many different? I'm sorry. Oh, I said enthusiast classes. Oh, enthusiast. Okay. Yeah. And and how many different tracks did you go to that first oh, year? Lord, um, Auto Club Speedway, Road Atlanta, Button Willow. Um, I think it was New Jersey was the other one. So four, okay. I think it was four. And, four and some tracks. some pretty different tracks too. Very different. Just it was crazy to see the different elevation changes, different scenery, just the facility as a whole. Definitely. Yeah. Like, well, like Willow Springs is more of a tight track. Road Atlanta is just like wide open. Yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 and just the incline, like when I was, because I used a Forza to train for Road mm-hmm. Atlanta, and like that video game does not do justice on the hill going up, and nor the hill going down. Sure. <laughs> I was like, holy cow! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and how did that first year go? Like, what? Like, did it? Was it what you expected? Did it was, like you you've gotten hooked on driving fast. Now you're competing. Did all of a sudden driving fast and in in a competition environment? Was that something that was like even more exciting? Um, it was, I think it was more exciting because I was with a group of people that also were trying to be the best that they can and build the most badass cars that, you know, they, <laughs> they could. Yeah. And um, I didn't expect to get like any like trophies or like anything like that. I just, I, I like do racing just for me, just because it brings mm-hmm. me pleasure. And so it, it was kind of interesting that I did get a trophy in 2018 at Road Atlanta. Wow. It was second place. And it was funny because they actually had on Inst- on Global Time Attacks Instagram, it, they pictured, they put a picture. It was my car and then a uh, Mercedes AMG. I can't remember what AMG it was. And everybody was like, oh, the AMG is going to win. And I was like, oh, hell no. No. <laughs> I was like, I will show them. <laughs> and, you're not, you're um, not intimidated at all. No, no, I was like, I was like, I'm the underdog here. I'll show them. And um, 
uh, I remember like the first day I didn't, it was a little bit hotter, didn't do great times. My brakes weren't feeling great. I had R1 concept ones and they were not keeping up with me on the back straight. So I noticed mm. I had to slow down way further back. So then I swapped that night, even though my husband's like, oh, you don't need them. I'm like, no, trust me, I need these brake pads. Mm. So I, I had traded up for the Hawk DTC 60s oh, yeah. and it improved my time. I think I beat him by like two seconds or something like that the next day. Like it was awesome. cold in the morning. It was foggy. So perfect for that turbo. The car loves, you know how she really love mm -hmm. that cold and they just eat it up. And yeah, no, I got second place. So That's was, awesome. Yeah. So I was like, yes. <laughs> and then, and then once that happened, like, was that it? Like once you, once you got your taste of competition and had some success with it, like, is that now, is that now kind of what you're, what you aspire to do as much as possible? As much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, again, funding is like the big thing why we haven't, well, and the cars had some other issues too, but <laughs> mostly yeah. funding. Um, but I would love to, I do love traveling. That's why we live full-time in an RV. So we don't have a mortgage. This is our mortgage. Mm -hmm. And that way we put the car on the back of it and then travel across the nation to those different tracks and it's just so awesome to like wake up to the sound of race cars in your home <laughs> mm -hmm. you have everything with you you never forget anything and that's, oh man yeah that's why we do what we do i mean there's some drawbacks of course to rv life but yeah, it's worth it <laughs> well i mean it's it's it yeah I, i've seen i know that you you've done that uh right dussex who's on the podcast often has kind of basically done that he's he basically his home base is now his rv Mm -hmm. and and man every time he goes to the track it's like that's the setup holy cow like to yeah. like you said you, you can't forget anything because you brought it all with you um that's one of my my problems all the time is like whatever the six things that i need most four of them are at home because no matter what i do i i, I have a skill for that but uh yeah so you've, you've got it all and you've got the environment mm -hmm. um you know kind of like where we started one of the things that i i've started to realize but I, i'm not i'm not competing so it's not like the degree to which is not the same, but like the mental state to get in to, to actually be able to like really have your focus and be able to really try and drive and do as best as you can is really important. And it's hard if you're just getting up crazy early to drive an hour and a half, two hours to the track, yes. you're sleep deprived, you're in, in the hustle and bustle of the, of the event. And then you've mm -hmm. got to go out there and actually try and also yeah. be quick. By then like, your nerves are shot, <laughs> like literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like having a, a like a really good base environment at the track. I mean, that's that's I think a huge advantage. If it, if it is because you wake up rested, like you're not sleeping on the air mattress or on the floor. Like it's nice, comfortable bed with shower, kitchen, like what else Everything. did you ask for? You know, it, it <laughs> right? feels like you're at home because you are. It, it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why we love it. So. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, and and you mentioned some some problems with the car, and I want to maybe just kind of touch on that a little bit because that is that is a problem that gets us all. I mean, it's one of those like the, so the dream would be you have your car, you just put gas in it, maybe the occasional brake pads and tires, and just go out there and just drive. But that's unfortunately not always, or maybe even not usually, how it all works out. It's yeah, it's not problems, reality. <laughs> problems crop up and then it becomes this question of how do you how do you deal how do you deal with that? How do you work through that? And I think as like uh, people get the bug and you start driving more at some level, some way, somehow you're going to have something that you run into that is that is this kind of like issue that all of a sudden keeps keeps popping up mm -hmm. oftentimes. Like sometimes you can rely if it's a simple enough thing like like brake pads or, or something like that. Maybe there's like trying a different pad or different fluid or something like that it might get you over the hurdle. But as you start to you know, get faster and make more power, really like get to the point where you're competing, you might have an issue that just is not, is, there's no easy fix. And that can be really challenging. It and, is, yeah. And I know for you, I think it's been, if I understand right, it's been the oiling system that's been plaguing mm -hmm. you for, for a good while. Oh, yeah. we, we've three years <laughs> three years three years yep <laughs> yep. yeah so the reality is you know the more you modify your vehicle the more things can go wrong and yeah. break and you try to you know add parts that help you know create more reliability for you and that yeah sometimes those products can be a pain in the butt to work with sure <laughs> sure like like it's a huge it was a huge learning curve for my husband and i because we didn't we kind of got the concept but not all of it so, and we, we pride ourselves in doing most of the work on our car, but, um, 
last year we dropped the car off over uh, in boost performance and mm -hmm. we're like we can't like we're done <laughs> yeah. like i was going crazy because i'm like i need to get out on the track like mentally i was just like so anxious i'm like i need to get out on the track like exercise helped me for a while but then it's like okay this is just not the same right like it's just not the same <laughs> yeah let's put it that way and um like and i called i don't know i called daily i've called press is it preston or peterson the, peterson that's the one yeah i called a bunch of different dry sum companies they all came to the same conclusion that you need to increase we need to increase the oil lines from the pump to the tank from a dash mm -hmm. 12 to dash 16. so mm -hmm. that's what they did and then also we learned that from um jerry that the sensor that they use for the oil pressure gauge the the brass one it errors out after it hits a certain temperature and i was maybe that's what i kept seeing on the track was that mm. after five laps after everything got nice and hot i would have oil pressure of zero <laughs> and I'm right like, which is wow. which is not what you want no no like yeah. even even harvey's like your car should have died <laughs> like really yeah. should have died so he really he also thinks it really was the sensor and so when they replaced it with the stainless steel one it showed a little bit more accurate numbers mm. So, well, and and so this is Harvey, Harvey and, and Jerry at InBoost and in uh, the Boost Creep. We know those guys well, but if, if people aren't familiar, uh, they're in Longmont and they they do some awesome builds and awesome tuning. And yes, Harvey's yes. the guy that has tuned our race cars forever. So yep. definitely yep. good guys, good hands to put your car in. If if you've yeah. got one of these, they've they've helped us out a time or two. Uh, Jerry saved our bacon. We had a, a crazy issue with the our Pike Street car just breaking up a wide open throttle, couldn't figure out what it was. And it actually melted some wiring for the fuel pump. Eesh. So yeah, it's, it's always something, right? Right. They love yeah. Subarus. I swear they love their, the nuts like to come loose. They like to melt things. They like to catch on fire. <laughs> I don't think they like to catch on fire. They, they do them often, but yeah, hopefully <laughs> not the fire maybe part. They, maybe they don't like it. That's just what they do. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it is certainly challenging, but, and, and I mean, what you're describing, it, it's not uncommon. Like we, we've all hit points like that, like of late, what we've discussed, you know, is we've had a lot of cooling issues with our, our car for, for years. And we, we finally have, I think we've got the pieces, knock wood together. Like we actually have a good enough picture that I think now we're, we're probably gonna have some kind of a solution mm -hmm. for hopefully the best functioning cooling system we've had to date. But it, it's, it's really hard to work through that stuff sometimes. And especially like, you know, we're, when we were talking about at the beginning, Driving fast is fun. Driving at the track is fun. These are the things that you love to do. This is how you kind of clear your head and just let everything mm -hmm. else fall away and, and kind of de-stress and just have a good time. And then all of a sudden you get to this point where now it's it's almost like the the reverse, where like now, like, okay, well, hopefully this time it like the fuel system will work or the oiling system will work. And that becomes its own kind of struggle. Yeah, and, it, it becomes the stressor in your yeah. life versus the de-stressor. <laughs> right. So, well, but obviously yeah. you've stuck with it. So like, yes. how, like, how were you able to kind of navigate that or, or what was kind of the motivation to kind of stick with it and, and not, not just throw up your hands give up. and give up necessarily? <laughs> oh, trust me. There's a couple of times I wanted to give up, but <laughs> um, I think it's the love that I have for my car because mm -hmm. of how much joy it has brought me throughout my life. Whenever I'm feeling depressed or just struggling, I would just take it up to the mountains, go through mm -hmm. the canyons or just anywhere where I can just like, to, I don't know, just clear my head. And I think mm -hmm. it's my love for the car that like kept pushing me through, even though I was cursing its name and I'm right. just like, why don't you just work? <laughs> right. And I, I don't know. I feel like I kind of, put my brain in like uh, kind of like you know like horses with the with the little shields where they can't mm -hmm. look anywhere else I think that's what I did and I just kind of like okay I'm not gonna look I'm not gonna look at the car I'm just gonna just I guess keep hoping that we will find the solution one day and just keep hoping and keep hoping and after a while yeah you don't realize oh my god it's been three years and so I I, I don't know I just I, that's what my brain does, I guess. I right. just live in a little bit of a denial state. Then, well, you know? I mean, sometimes the best thing you can do is to take a step back and to take a break. I mean, it, it's like when you're when you're in a series, like we Scotty has been having this fueling issue for the last, I don't know, few events, and he's he's trying to run a series, run a season. And and it, it cropped up at the very end of last season and it, it didn't completely 
ruin his season, but now it's picked up again mm -hmm. beginning of this season. So now it's this ongoing struggle. But when you're trying to hit X number of events to actually put together a season, like that's where you're kind of in this little bit of a pressure cooker yes. where, you, where yeah. you don't have a lot of time. And so then that kind of, that, that increases the stress, uh, you know, yeah. especially yeah. if you're dealing with a problem that just like, it doesn't make sense or like every solution that should work for some reason isn't working. Like it just, yeah. the stress level can come up. And I think like, in those those moments, I had to give myself permission to not be so hard on myself for not figuring out the problem and say, you know what, this will happen in its time when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. And it's really hard to to think about it that way and say, well, there goes that other race. And like, I wouldn't even look on Instagram on race days because I'm like, it's going to make me too sad. So again, right. blinders. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <know? laughs> Yes, it's what it is. You, yeah. you've got to do whatever you whatever you need to do especially at the time but the the key thing is to to try and still come back to it don't mm -hmm. just abandon it you know don't don't let your car turn into a barn find 20 years from now right right you know, like, yeah <laughs> it's well and, and sometimes too it's 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 like you said you called around you you talked to a lot of people it's it's finding the right person to 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 get to get somebody else that likes puzzles to look at the car and go, this doesn't make any sense. I can solve this. I can help mm -hmm. you. I can help you with this. And, and Jerry is definitely one of those guys that's good mm -hmm. at that for sure. Yes. Yeah. So it's like sometimes that's the, that's another thing that that helps is, is asking for help or, or letting yourself ask for help versus just put it all on your shoulders to try and figure yeah. out the puzzle. Yep, and just cough up the money and be like, you know what, I can't do this. Like, <laughs> you got to admit yeah. defeat too. You're like, you know what, I'll let somebody else. It's going to be someone else's problem now. Here's, I'm here's the repair bill and compare that for your sanity for the next six <laughs> months. Like, Exactly. That's that's where we were because like it was driving my husband crazy. He was just yeah. so frustrated too. And he's like, I hate this stupid car. And I was like, yep. I know, I know. It's like trust me. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, would I be willing to part with my car? And how would that feel versus continuing to solve this problem? Mm -hmm. And selling that car would, oh my God, I would devastate me more mm -hmm. than trying to continue to yeah. work on the problem. So I guess and compare and contrast also helps. For sure. Well, and, and the thing is, like, <laughs> as, as you start to compete, as you start to really get your car to more of like the, the front of, of the group that you're competing with, and, and you're you know, if these are starting off life as street cars, usually you have to do a lot to get them to the point where they're going to be to the front front of a group or be competitive, yeah. Yeah. which means you've changed a lot of things. You, you've 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 deviated Touched a everything. lot yeah. from from the way that the car rolled off the showroom floor. And each one of those changes oftentimes can bring with it little complications that aren't obvious mm -hmm. or don't always present themselves. And then you get like two or three of these things working together. Right. Yeah. Or you like upgrade one OEM part for aftermarket, that aftermarket part stronger than the OEM part it's connected to it breaks that part. And then down yep. the line, it breaks another part. So you're just constantly chasing <laughs> yes. all these little things to the point where it's like, okay, you are beefy now. So right. let's do this. Right. You, know? <laughs> you, you find a lot of weak links. Yes. For yes, sure. You do. Yep. But it's, but that's just, that's just part of it. I think in like the more that we, we've kind of talked about it mm -hmm. on, on other episodes, like it, like knowing that this is kind of the environment that you're getting to as you're starting to modify the car to that degree. It's one of the reasons we've, we've not really tried to push power in the race car yet because we know there's this oiling system, the cooling system. We don't have enough of a handle on those yet to really try and like, well, let's, let's double the power. In this wall. And that, that was our thinking too. Like we didn't want to push the power on the car until the oiling system issue was resolved because I didn't sure. want to break a new well I mean it's not new anymore but it was new back then <laughs> three yeah. years ago and that yeah that's why we waited all this time and and now that it's up to like 614 to the wheels now now it's crazy now now when I go on the track I'm like holy crap this just doubled in power mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and it kind of took my confidence a little bit away because I'm like holy crap this is a lot and these tires cannot keep up because I, I still have my um what are they? The uh, federal five nine five SS, so they're like oh, yeah. 20, 220 tread wear. <laughs> yeah. So they are not grippy for that power. So, and 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 uh, going back to the super event, like driving those other those W the other WRXs, it brought me back in a time where I'm like, oh okay, I, I'm comfortable with this, and it kind of helped mm -hmm. bring up my confidence. Like, okay, I got this, I got this. So now yeah. it's like, now with the double power, you have to relearn 
everything. Yep. So, yep. So. And, and different techniques and, and just like the car is not going to behave the same, mm -hmm. but like, as long as you've got some controls on it, as long as you've got enough, you know, grip to turn the car and the brakes that, that will work, you know, for yep. the, the number of laps you're, you're trying to get the car to go for, then you can usually figure the rest of it out, hopefully. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did find some really cheap slicks out in Colorado when we picked up mm -hmm. the car and that, my God, I'm like, why haven't I done slicks before? These yeah. are amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> They're <It's>, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Break like really good track pads. Like you mentioned the Hawk DTC, mm -hmm. DTC sixties, the DTC seventies, um, some of the Frodo pads, like any, any race pad, once you put it on, it's hard to go back because now you know what the braking system is actually capable of. And then sticky tires are the same way. Like right. once you drive a real set of like competition slicks or like Hoosiers, mm -hmm. everything else is like, well, it's kind of like driving on ice after that. And it's, it it's is, hard, yeah. it's hard to go back because there's just, the, the grip is just so much different. Right. And I feel like, Oh, cool. Now the car is doing what I want to do. Like my driving style. Now the tools match my driving style. Yeah. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Now my car, it's like, it just turns so easily. Like you just point it and it just goes and it's, yeah, it, she's just a beast out there. now. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Well, so. and, and I wanted to ask about the oiling system because if I understand right, I think you're close to, if, if not, would you would you say that you've got a handle on it? Or do you think you're yeah. ready to run? Yep, okay. yep. Uh, went out there in March. Uh, we had other issues. <laughs> now that the car is going fast, uh, we broke the splitter mount. <laughs> oh, too much okay. downforce. Too much downforce um, at speed. Yep, sure. yep. But it did keep up the entire time. So I think the issue has been resolved. We're going to see in the summer when it gets hotter to see if that pressure drops again or if it kind of just maintains. But now mm -hmm. on startup, on cold idle, it's 100 psi, which is like exactly what we're looking Perfect. for. Yep. Out on the track, it, go, it can go anywhere from 40 to 70, depending, you know, how fast I'm going. So it's, yeah. it, I feel like it's keeping up. I definitely no zeros anymore. Good. So I'm Good. like, so now I can actually focus on the track instead of like, listening for every noise and trying to smell okay is that a new bernie smell is that an old like bad mm -hmm. bernie smell is right. like and like watching my gauges so i feel like when i'm on the track with the oiling issue i was worrying more about the car keeping the car alive versus just driving yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. You're, you're you're driving in the gauges you're not even really paying as much attention to where you're going is like what all the what all the needles are doing Right, right. I should I should be focused more on my skill. How do I improve lap after lap versus okay, is this car going to die on me right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Been yep. there. Absolutely. Yep. Well, very cool. I mean, do you have do you have any kind of anything on your horizon? Like what is what is your plan for like the next year or, or so? Are you gonna try and get back into to global and grid life and those sorts of events? Um, for this year we definitely have the Utah NASA region. Mm -hmm. uh, we're definitely gonna do that because I do wanna do some more tests because now that we're growing faster other yep. things are breaking so i want to make sure we're all set before we invest a lot of money into going out of state so we're hoping that we might be able to make alpine um oh, yeah. life out there in september so very cool our fingers <laughs> cross our very fingers nice are. <laughs> it, it's been a long road but it sounds like you're finally to the point where you're looking at getting back into doing some stuff that you want to do with the car yeah. versus versus just just fighting with it Yes, yes. I want to be able to, again, focus just driving. And that, yeah. that's my only worry out there. So that's yeah. awesome. And then, and then we'll see what happens next year. Maybe, maybe next year we might be able to get more funding and join Global Time Attack again, because I would love to go back to Coda. Mm -hmm. That was an awesome track. And with this power, I would love to go down the front straight and not feel like I'm waving people by. Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with the VF52 turbo, it, it doesn't do great on the top end speed. So it's just, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, and there's there were so many cars this year that like, like really high power cars, like uh, Porsches and McLarens and stuff out there. They were just like, there's, there's some fast Subarus out there, but it's, Man, you you've got to really bring your A game at that track. It's it's a very high speed track for sure. It is. So yeah, yeah, beautiful though, beautiful. Oh yeah, I love, it's I, neat. I love it. Yeah, so. and and talking about a hill that you you nothing does it justice until you actually see it. Like that hill for turn one is mm -hmm. that's crazy. It really is. You're like, wow, I just keep going up, <laughs> and you can't it, see to the other yeah. side till you're actually turning. So it's pretty much a hill climb. I think mm -hmm. turn one is a hill climb. They just don't, they don't tell you that until you get there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We try to, yes. Yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. We're, we're fingers crossed. We're hoping to go back next year. 
Um, so yeah, that'd be very cool if you can get out there and yeah. it sounds like there's a lot of Subarus that are, that are looking at, you know, super lap battle that are looking at global and grid life and, and getting back in and competing. It's like, I don't know if we all had the same set of problems or a lot of people had the same set of problems and, and took a couple of years off. And, mm -hmm. but, but it seems like now that things are getting up and running again, there's a lot of super race cars that are, that are ready yeah. to get back on track again, which is very cool to see. Right. Right. And another issue, another thing that could be a component could be like, you know, COVID like, well, there's that, that. you know, <laughs> well, that, there's that. I, I feel like those two years, it's like, what, where did those two years go? I don't even know what I was doing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cannot believe that that was two years ago and here we are, but yeah. I mean, knock wood again, at least it looks like things are finally settling down and finally getting back to whatever normal is, I guess, as normal yeah. as it can be anymore. So that's, exactly. that's encouraging for sure. Yeah. Someone or maybe. That could be it, but yeah, who knows? <laughs> yes. Well, well, as we're winding down here, I think I mentioned at the beginning, but I'll mention again, uh, your, your Instagram is the racing Chica. Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere else on social media that people can find you, follow you, see what you're up to? Yeah, sure. Um, it's the racing Chica at, at Twitter and Facebook. And I also have a website that's the racing Chica.com where you can read all about my story and, um, also have all my, I call it my achievements there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Very so cool. I might be I might be incorrect on my timelines. I wonder if I got my TT license. I think in 2016. So <laughs> it might be in a year off, but <laughs> it's on we it. will not hold you to it. We will not okay. hold you to it. it the, the point is that you got it. Yes. You, yeah. Before you started yeah. to compete, that's that's all that really matters. But that's yeah. awesome. Yep. Yep. Well, well, Jamie, thanks again for making the time and sitting down and chatting. And uh, oh, I'm thanks, very, John. it was so fun to see you out there and, and to be able to ride with you at, at New WRX. And I'm, I'm hopeful for you that maybe you get to drive some more Subarus down the road, like for Subaru, because right. that's pretty darn cool. That was really so, cool. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Highlight of awesome. my moment. <laughs> for sure. As a Subaru enthusiast, especially, it's like, that is, that is the call. It's like, you know, your armchair right. quarterbacking, your phone rings like, hey, we need you to come and play in the big game. <laughs> Like, that's awesome. Like, I'll show up. I'll show up 110%. <laughs> so. That's right. I'll drive my Subaru. I'll, I'll find a Subaru. You, you just point me to a Subaru. I'll drive it for you. Whatever you need. Right. Oh, my God. So many people ask me. They're like, can we ride in your car? And I was like, I don't think the event organizer would be too happy if I took my old ass Subaru out there. <laughs> I think the whole point is to showcase the new one. That's so. true. That's true. Would have been cool, but you're probably uh, yeah. right. Yeah, I would have. I mean, if they said it was okay, I would have. Yeah. You, know, I don't you never know. I don't want to outshine the other series. So. That's right. <laughs> Next time. Next time. Next time, for sure. <laughs> All right, cool. John, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, JB. Take care. And you thanks, too. everybody, for listening. Thanks for your support. And until next time, as always, stay tuned to Flatiron Studio. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports Podcast. Once again, we'd like to let you know that your support is what makes this show possible. Be sure to check out our online store at flatironstuning.com for any of your aftermarket or OEM Subaru parts needs. And as always, stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning.